Embarking upon uh, a woman empowerment conference with Lisa Bevere. Oh, very uh, cool! And it's going to be awesome. Uh, but the it's, a, it's the theme is freedom cry. Oh, cool. unleashing the roar by the power. That's that dunamis yeah. within. So that's why I've been playing the song. Nothing like being free. Right, that's cool. But but I believe that God has us on a movement for freedom cry. Yeah, that's good. Freedom cry. Talk about that uh, because when you sing that song, boy. Right. It is a cry. You know, it's it's something that comes from a deep place in, in, in your heart and soul. Mm -hmm. and, and at least that's for me. Yes. You know, I was, I was the song actually was birthed out of a church service. I was in a church service okay. in a beautiful moment of worship. And the thought just, you know, it was beautiful. The congregation, people were worshiping. People were being, you know, freed mm -hmm. from past addictions. And just all kind of mm. stuff. We were just really in a movement of God uh, on that particular day. And you heard the song. And I saying. just, you know, I just, the, the, the phrase mm -hmm. hit my life. I was watching people yeah, just, get delivered uh -huh. and, and, and walk, you know, in freedom. Mm -hmm. and, and the phrase hit my mind. There's nothing, nothing like, like being, being free, free, man. And I, I just started singing that. Uh -huh. You know, I just started uh -huh. singing the line. Uh -huh. uh, and, and like, bam, the place just kind of erupted. Mm -hmm. And I realized... That's so true. That's a declaration. Yes, it is a declaration. It's a declaration. And I mean, that's been like four or five years ago mm -hmm. that that happened, you know, and that we recorded that. So, I mean, it's it, it's been like, uh, the Lord told me when, when I recorded that, the Lord said, listen, you don't have to hire a marketing firm. Mm. Don't search for a record label. Come on now. Don't, don't try to be conventional. Come don't on. try to use the music industry's ins and outs. And don't try to meet this person and that person. The Lord said, when I, I want to say something, my voice is loud enough That's to be heard. That's confirmation. That's yeah. confirmation. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So when God wants to speak, mm -hmm. His voice is the loudest voice mm -hmm. on, on in the universe. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of kept my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as far as uh, you know, uh, those kind of things went, and I just opened my mouth and sang and released a song wow. when given the opportunity. And the Lord certainly uh, has ended up taking that song and many others from and that then after around that, the world. you went and recorded it and that's yeah. how things just so how, just, how does things just is that typically how it's birthed in your spirit is that typically how you hear yeah. uh, and, and get your songs and your recordings sometimes it happens in the moment like that yeah. and sometimes it's you know wrapped around a theme or yeah. I'm, you know a lot of times I tell people all the time I, you know I'm you know, I, I, I like to just live in a constant dialogue mm -hmm, uh, with mm -hmm. God. I, I don't just set aside, okay, well, I'm going to go to prayer when we have 6 yeah, o'clock prayer. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's that, a lifestyle. Yeah, that seems yeah, a little yeah, futile yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah. I enjoy doing yeah, that. Yeah, I yeah. want to go to 6 o'clock prayer. But if you don't make it. But what at 3? Right, what if right, I need right, to make right, 3? You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. So, so I've tried to develop, you know. <laughs> he'll, he'll wake you up at 314. Yes. You know? Yeah, he'll yeah. Tell you. I'm just, yeah, I just kind of like, during my day, man, I just, I'll walk around and sometimes my kids will say, Daddy, what you say? I'm, like, I'm nothing. I'm just talking to God. And, and so, but you know, that's when you have a relationship. I have an idea. My wife will tell you, you know, she's so funny. I'll say, honey, come here. You know, I have a piano in my house and I might just be, you know, uh, barbecuing or hanging out at the house and man, something will hit me or I'm, you know, listening to a podcast mm -hmm. Of a, a, a you know message or something like that, and a phrase will hit me or something. I'll just start singing, uh, you know. And so sometimes the songs hit me just like that. <laughs> just like that. Just, just like, like that. It's amazing because on, on our magazine, uh, we having we have Marvin Sapp on the front cover. Oh, very cool. So I was honored to be able to interview him for the magazine. Yeah. However, he was even speaking about how a lot of his worship he gets through his tribulations. Oh, you know? yeah. That's uh, and, and so I was just making mention of that because oftentimes we as believers will try to compare ourselves. Uh, yeah. One to another, and I just wanted to bring out how you know you could just get it from. I mean, God deals with us as individuals for who He has called us to be. Absolutely, and there are songs you know that um, you know that I have written mm -hmm. through 
Going all kind of different experiences. experiences. You know, I remember one song in particular that and it's not on this last record, it's on a previous record and a guy named Alvin Slaughter recorded it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called uh, My Joy. Mm -hmm. But it's got this band to the songs you've turned my morning into dancing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was written after a really, just a really difficult time in my life. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and I'll never forget, you know, just, you know, being in, it was in a time of mm -hmm. prayer, you know, at the church where I was a minister of music for years. Mm -hmm. And the Lord just bringing that melody and that mm -hmm. clarity after reading that scripture, you know, the Lord's just going to give you the oil of gladness, yes, the oil of joy yes, in the yes. morning. And, uh, you know, sometimes we have to remind ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, and to thank God that we have songs yes, for that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that he can give us beauty for ashes. And, yes. You know, strength for fear. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, gladness for mourning, yeah. you know. Now, I was reading that you was the... Uh, Worship pastor. I was. You know, uh, what, what position are you in now in your church? Talk about uh, that. Well, right now. Are you a pastor now? Well, I, <laughs> I'm living that way. <laughs> I'm living that way. Uh, yeah, right now, my wife and I have been in full time evangelistic, itinerant mm -hmm. type ministry mm -hmm. for about six and a half years. Okay. I was a, a worship pastor in a church, mm -hmm. an associate pastor, large church in mm -hmm. uh, the Central Florida area for uh, nine years. Mm -hmm. And the Lord just opened doors mm -hmm. tremendously mm -hmm. for me uh, outside of the church. And so uh, we went into full-time uh, itinerant ministry concerts, mm -hmm. conferences. I also speak. Um, and so uh, there are several ministries in our heart that mm -hmm. we haven't yet birthed. Mm -hmm. uh, pastoral ministry is probably in our future. Uh, we also support and desire to open a women's home mm. for abused women. Just several things that mm -hmm. we want to do mm -hmm. that are close to my wife and I, uh, to our heart. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to, you know, we want to make a local impact as well as a global impact. Uh, you know, it's it's an amazing thing to see people's lives change. It, it really is. Really change. It really is. Um, I, trust me, it really is. But it takes laboring. It, you have to it labor. Takes labor. Yeah, it have, takes and labor. You, and, and it takes you know, it takes a season uh, of hearing and yeah. understanding yeah. Yeah. Uh, and not just jumping off into, you know, into start stuff. a ministry mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, you know, we're, we're very, very sensitive um, to the fact that God needs kingdom people yes. on the earth yes. Uh, yes. doing a kingdom purpose. So, yeah, so we're not going to stop, you know, we're not going to stop mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. ministering to the nations. Uh, that's one of the things God's called us to do mm -hmm. is to be a resource to the body mm -hmm. of Christ for worship. Mm -hmm. uh, but at, at some point, we will also have a local ministry as well. Well, you're actually here on our television show, Doing Miss Woman and Ram today, so I'm going to put you on the spot. All right. Because <laughs> we definitely have uh, our magazine to accompany the show. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a dual front cover. Uh, real awesome men, and on the other side is a dunamis woman. Oh, so cool. in 2015, uh, I would love for you to be featured on that front cover. You, you pretty, 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 pretty good. <laughs> hey, hey, I, be, I, be, I, be, I might go. I might have to diet now. I might have, I might have to. That's okay. We got all the technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, if you, like yeah, that. yeah, get my skinny side. We'll be all right. <laughs> and definitely, because the whole premise is that there is no real awesome man without right. a woman of power. Oh, absolutely. A dunamis woman absolutely. that doesn't stand beside you, but she's birthing your vision yeah. through her That's intercessor, yeah. through her prayer life. That would be Keisha, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Oh, come on now. Yeah, yeah. And, she and, is a prayer warrior, and a lot of people, you know, and, and I don't toot that horn, you know, mm -hmm. or blow that horn. That's why I mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. People, yeah, pe people have to realize that that's a calling, and it it's, is. you know, it's something uh, there, there have been uh, almost daily. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, she. You know, she, she. She's the early riser. You know, she's mm -hmm. rolling out of the bed at five thirty mm -hmm, and pressing mm -hmm, through mm -hmm, things in mm -hmm, prayer mm -hmm, daily. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, when when I'm waiting on my alarm to go up at seven fifteen <laughs> because my son has to be the bus stop at eight fifteen. Right, right, right. You know, and so uh, yeah, yeah. She's a woman of prayer and, and just she. You know, she's got her. Uh, we just released a, a studio recording for mm -hmm, her as well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a solo album, her first ever solo album. And it's got a really cool vibe to it. So. And you all have a CD together, am I correct? Uh, well, no, she sings on my record, and then. Am I being prophetic right? <laughs> yeah, actually, you are. Okay. Well, we we are going to do that. Um, after I'm getting ready to record another uh, praise and worship album, okay. but our plans are to do a dual, dual. album uh, after following that. Um, but we wanted to put out 
a, a studio recording of mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. uh, where she could just be expressive and artistic and, mm -hmm. and really tell a story, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, of her own journey mm -hmm. um, through songs. And she's done that. It's called Still Standing. It's mm -hmm. really cool. I should check it out on iTunes definitely, or our website, trendcore.com. Um, well, we'll definitely, and definitely uh, featuring her on the front cover right there with you. Oh, that'd be uh, awesome. Taking that message out there. Yeah, you know, we would love uh, that. Definitely, that honor, you know, yeah. Now, you here, but when you all come back to Chicago, yeah. it's going to be Keisha Corey. Yeah. I'm just letting you know that right That's now. That's great. All right, cool. I love it. You know what? <laughs> I think, I, what, I love it. I'm so mm -hmm. proud of her mm -hmm. and what God is doing in her life um, that... You know, I just believe in, mm -hmm. I just believe in promotion and I believe that in God's time and his season, mm -hmm. he raises people up mm -hmm. and uses them. And uh, she's a mighty woman of God. And, and uh, I, I tell, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I used to tell mm -hmm. people jokes all the time. I'd be doing concerts and she would come out and sing the song that she mm -hmm. sings on my record mm -hmm. called The Love of God. And I used to make a joke and say, when the world finds out about her, they're going to kick me to the curb. But she's amazing. And I'm, I'm very, very grateful to be married to such a Yeah, you all person. made a great choice. I you, did. You, you made God a great smiled choice, on me. You know? Well, I really want to thank you for this opportunity. It's I truly honor. want to thank you for this opportunity. You, and let me just say this in closing, Trent, mm -hmm. uh, because you are so busy being you. And, and God loves it. We love it. You know, you. everyone who sings your song love it. The worship will love it. Thank you. However, I just decree and declare that your life will be an example to men. I to men. That. that they will know how to love their wives. Illuminate them. Amen. Hold up the torch. Amen. Be the man just through your life. It's worth nothing you're trying to be. That's why I'm speaking it to everyone there. And as you continue to do what God called you to do, your life will be a living example. Well, I receive that. A living I example as that. a father. Thank you. As a husband. That's the highest And most of all, as priority. a real awesome man. Thank you. But worship is just the foundation. That's just that's just who we are. It's who, it's who we, we are. Well, Trent, thank you once again for being Absolutely. right here. God bless you. What a blessing. Yes, give them your website. Tell them where they could just reach out to you, get that CD, get okay. everything. Yeah, yeah, totally. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, it's uh, TrentCorey.com. Mm -hmm. You can order physical CDs there. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also go to iTunes, Amazon, Google Play. Okay. Any of those places. So TrentCorey.com. Uh, matter of fact, Keisha's got a blog at KeishaCorey.com okay. as well. Uh, but then you can also text the word worship mm -hmm. to 555-888. That's the word worship, worship. to 555-888. It's kind of like American Idol. <laughs> uh, but what will happen is you'll get the link sent right to your phone uh, for um, my album, on uh, either Google Play or iTunes, you just click that, it'll take you right to our music. And so. if you want to hear me sing Nothing Like Being Free, go to hey. www.dunamis-woman.com. Bring it, bring and it. Nothing Like Being Free. Dunamis <laughs> Conference. We're going to be here next year. Thank y'all. There you go. Thank you. Prayer is nothing but direct communion with God, and He wants us to communicate with Him about the things that really concern us. Dunamis Woman, How to Pray with Power on Purpose. This book actually changed my prayer life. If anyone knows me, they know that I was not the one who prayed to God. I was really scared to do so because I didn't think I was worthy. But in this book, uh, Devetta, Pastor D. Collins, just in, in layman terms, teaches us about purpose, teaches us about prayer, teaches us how to be specific, teaches us how to advance from different levels and different relations with not only God, but just those around us as it relates to our prayer life. I admonish each and every one of you to get this book. It has changed my prayer life and I know it will change yours. Visit us at www.dunamish-woman.com and when you go on the website it's $8.95 but if you have registered or will register for private time with D, it will be $5 and not only will it be $5 but you'll get the experience to be with D and really understand how this book was generated, just the power that God has given her. Again, it changed my life, it changed my prayer life, and I know it will do the same for you. Thank you and enjoy. Well, there you have it. D and Trent Corey, a renowned worship leader, man of God, real awesome man, husband, father, king, He's just dynamic. He is just one of a kind. And as you can see, we had some fun. It was just awesome 
just being in the midst of a real awesome man where you can just be free to be who you are, nothing binding you at all. So there's nothing like, there really is nothing like being free. And I want you to be free. He wants you to be free. We all need to be free, free in Christ. And that means just free to be who God created you to be. You know, I have this saying uh, when I'm engaging with people, when people try to bind me and they try to uh, put me in the box of who they want me to be. And I always tell them, you do you, me be me, and we be free. That means D got to be D and who God created her to be. Only he can enhance me. Only he can refine me. And you got to do you and only he can enhance you and only he can refine you. And that's what worship is about. We were all created to worship and we have taken the place and the occupancy of Satan who was designed, created to be a worshiper, to worship God. He was worship and no longer is he fulfilling that position. So now as we have accepted our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into our hearts to live by him and the mandate of who he required us to be, we can't be nothing but free and worship takes you into the presence of God. So if it, nothing else takes place in worship, he reveals you to you. Man, and when I've had that experience, of God revealing me to me. I thought I knew me. I thought I was right, okay. And it doesn't mean I was all wrong, but he just had to reveal me, who D is, who Devetta is, who he created me to be. There's so many facets to me and I find out that as I learn about me, I'm learning more about God. And as I learn more about God, I'm learning about me. Why? Because he is in me, he abide in me and I abide in him. He is my father. He is the main one. He created me in his likeness and his image as he has taken me out of man. And now we are one in him. So I just enjoyed that experience and I want you to be free. And so who the son, as we talk about it, as Jesus talk about in, uh, as quotes in John eight, you know, the son ha have come to make you free, who the son set free, not who God set free, not the father set free, who the son set free. That son means he is like unto his father. And oftentimes we are bound. We are not liberated in ourselves because we're so busy trying to be like, or we have become like, shall I say, our earthly father, our earthly mother. Those are attributes that we're gonna have because we came out of them. But now as we have come back to God, he wants to enhance us and refine us. And we wanna take away all those bounds and things from our upbringing and our culture and our race and our religion and our gender and all those things that have now confound us when we got to be free, liberated to be who we are. The Bible say, be all things to men, whatever it takes to win the heart of man. Worship frees me, worship liberates me, worship takes me to who I am and reveals me to me. And when I'm not worshiping or when I'm not singing or when I'm not just totally focused in God's presence, his presence is with me and he's liberated me to be who I am. And so no longer can I live by the mandates of man. No longer can I live by the doctrinal views of man. No longer can I live by the label of Baptist, Catholic, Lutheran, Reformation, uh, non-denominational, all these things that man puts us in a box. Freedom is all about the kingdom. So who the son set free, who the son liberates, who the son exempts, who the son says you're no longer a slave, who the son says now you are a kingdom citizen. You can be free to be whatever you need to be, not only to just be crazy and have pleasure and to do all kinds of things, because when you really love God, you don't want to do all that anyway. You want to please the father. That's the beautiful part about me having a relationship with my father and my big brother, Jesus. Not only do he want to please me to be free, but I want to please him. I want to hear his heartbeat. I want to do what he requires me to do and worship reveals his heart to me. So when we're in worship, the father's revealing his heart. The son is revealing himself. The Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us into truth through worship. And that's what Trent Corey and I were sharing. And I just can't wait to he come here uh, and, and be we in a worship experience. And we will tell you more about that later. But the freedom that God wants you to experience, it's nothing like it. I'm here to tell you it's nothing like it. I have been bound. Let me, let me just share with you uh, just a little part about me. It's not me in its entirety, but it's a little part. I was bound so much by man. Man's rules, man's doctrines, man's rules in my home, man's rule in the school system, man's rules in the workplace, man's rules in the church. You know, you grow up as a part of that. It becomes who you are, but it's not truly who you are. Pleasing people, 
pleasing everyone, pleasing man, having that fear, having the, that anxiety, being timid, wondering, did I say this right? Did I do this right? Man, I remember when I was trying to please my pastor and I had to do everything right for him to approve me to preach the gospel, for him to approve me. Are you all hear what I'm saying? He approved me. That's some of the most craziest stuff I've ever heard in my life. I'm not saying that we don't respect our leaders. and I'm not saying that we don't respect order. But can't nobody approve me to be who I already got have validated me to be. Nobody can approve me. I've already been approved. I've already been accepted of the beloved. But God had to take me through the refiner's fire. He had to show me myself. He had to uh, take me as a solitaire. And, 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 and even in David, David said in the Psalm, Psalm 68, I placed a solitaire in every family to break the chains off them that are bound. So even you as a solitaire, me as a solitaire, he had to take me through the fire and he had to bring me out. And he had to look at this special cut, just like this solitaire on my, on, on my ring. And he had to shape in me. And he said, oh, it's not going good enough. And it's not shaping quite like I want it to be and taking me back to the original intent of who he created me to be. So he had to put me through some more trials. He had to put me through some more fire. He had to take me against the rules of, of, of man. He had to bring me to bring persecutor for standing up who I am because I was bound. It's a difference when you persecute it for Christ's namesake as opposed to being persecuted by religious namesake. I was persecuted by the Baptist. You can't preach. You can't teach. You're a woman. Who do you think you are? Only a man is supposed to do that. And I'm like, what is this gift God has given me? Not saying that I really wanted to. But the Holy Spirit kept on crying out and the Holy Spirit kept on beckoning me. And then he began to sing to me and he said, I call you pastor. And now when man says, no, you can't do it. And then they sitting there on their duff and they're not doing anything. But God is steadily warned me saying, get up and do what I've called you to do. He was liberating me. Man was trying to keep me bound. And Jesus said, I came to set you free. I came to make you free. Stand up for who I created you to be. And if nobody ever give you a platform, that's why I love being right here with you on this station. I love being right here with you where I can capture millions of people to say, be free. Be free in who God created you to be. Don't be ignorant. Don't be disrespectful. Don't be rude. Don't be haughty. Walk in a spirit of humility and be free and be confident in who God created you to be. And the only way that you can understand who that is, is by worshiping who he is. Do not worship him for what you want. Don't go into worship saying, God, give me this. God, give me that. Don't worship with a sorrowful spirit. Worship him because of who he is. Worship him. Sing songs out of your own heart. If you never listen to another CD, if you never go to another church where it's a band and an instrument and all those things, the melody is in your heart because there's nothing like being free. Don't let nobody ever tell you that you can't sing. I remember every time I tried to sing a note, they would tell me, shh, shh, don't. And I thought I was so obnoxious because they was puffing up the great singer. They was puffing up the person who knew how to do all the runs and stuff. Well, no, I don't know how to do all the runs, but my heart was singing melody unto God. So they really wasn't binding D. They didn't want worship in the place. They wanted the nicer singer who had the gift. Just because you got a gift, don't mean you're a worshiper. Just because you got a gift don't mean you're an anointed worshiper. When you've been through hell, that's when you're deemed as a worshiper. When you have been crushed, that means you're a worshiper. When you have been persecuted by man for Christ's sake, that's what makes you a worshiper. And it's nothing like being free because all the hell that you've been through have come to make you free. Who the Son makes free is free indeed. I am so excited about being with you and I'm so excited and I was so excited about being there with Trent Corey and I thank him for the opportunity. No matter how great God is making his name to be, he and his wife Keisha, he still came to a place to be able to be right here on Dunamis Woman and Real Awesome Men today with D. Collins. And no matter how high God takes you, make sure you can come back to be with someone else who might not be as great, who might not name it, must be as renowned as yours. Can we get that type of leadership? Can we get those type of worshipers? I love the fact that you made CDs, but can you come back and just shake hands with a woman? Can you shake hands with a sister? Can you shake hands with a brother? Because you've paved the way, and he's paved the way for many worshipers to come. So give us a call at 1-855-BE-DUNAMIS. Learn about our worship experience, because we're going to have so many worship experiences before we culminate to many worshipers coming to be able to take us and shift you and impart into you into the presence of God. 1-855-BE-DUNAMIS. Visit our website, www dunamis-woman.com. I'm Dee Collins, Dunamis Woman, Dee Speaks, You Think. God bless you. 
We don't know how you got here, but you're here. Dudamus Woman and Ram Magazine. I am Dee Collins, publisher of the magazine, and this is... And I'm Ariel, the editor-in-chief of the magazine. And we thank you for taking the time to stop in today. You want to give them a little bit about what our mission is about? It's so simple. Our mission is that we brand people, people brand their products while building their businesses, and we're restoring the lives and communities through our editorial content. That will be you. Yes, so if you are here to get empowered, to get understanding, feel free to take the time to look at our empowering editorials if you are a woman or a man. And if you want to utilize our magazine for advertisements or sponsorships, feel free to reach out to us at 847-908-0650. And that's 847-908-0650. We have a controlled circulation that where you can't go, this magazine will. Talk to you soon. Take care. Yeah.